One heresy we debunk is Galatians 3.25 here concerning about a license to sin. That's heresy 1. So we debunked heresy 1 here. So verse 25, we're going to cover five heresies in these following five verses. The first one that you want to notice right here is concerning about a license to sin. The second heresy that we're going to cover is verse 26. Now, how many of you have heard this throughout television, throughout churches? For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. We're all, child, we're all children of God. You ever heard that in churches? Yep. You ever seen that in political meetings? It just makes you want to throw up whenever some guy becomes president of the United States and says, we're all God's children, and I just throw up, and I'm like, yeah, I bet you you didn't even go to church. Yeah, let alone a saved Christian church, I bet you they don't even go to church those politicians. So here's the thing, is that you'll hear this quite often, you know, and if a homosexual says that to me, that, man, you're my brother in Christ, let's hug each other in the Lord, I'm going to go, nope, hands off. You ain't my brother in the Lord, man. Amen. You ain't my brother in the Lord. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to hug the Pope Francis and say, oh, man, you're my brother in the Lord. No, he's not. I don't like it in these ecumenical meetings where, you know, he gets along with the Jews and then with the Muslims and the Pope is there and then these stupid Protestant pastors who should know better about salvation sit over there and then they all say, we're all, brother, we're all children of God. We're all children of God. And then that's why you're going to bring in the New World Order. Okay, so that's the second heresy. The second heresy is ecumenicalism. Ecumenicalism is the second heresy that you want to watch out for. So with ecumenicalism, the easy debunking to that is, just look at that verse. It says in verse 26, For ye are all the children of God by what? Faith in Christ Jesus. There's a condition there. So in order to become God's child, which these people don't think about, when we talk about children of God here, the children of God, all, yes, all, all are children of God. We don't deny that. All are children of God who are saved by faith in Christ. Amen. See, so it doesn't matter what nationality you are. We agree with that. It doesn't matter what background or culture you are. We agree with that. But the idea is this, is that if you have faith in Christ, then it doesn't matter who you are. You're a child of God can't just say, oh, we're all children of God, we're all children of God. No, we're all children of God who are saved by faith in Christ. Okay, so now let's look at the third heresy, heresy number three, verse 27. This is quite often used by the Church of Christ because they don't really have a lot of common sense right here. Because what they do is that they like to look up any verse that says the word baptize. Mm -hmm. As long as it says the word baptize, they automatically assume this means water baptism, getting dunked in water. No, that's not true. That's not true. Let's look at verse 27 here. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, if many of you have been baptized into Jesus Christ, have what? Put on Christ. So then if you got baptized in Christ, and that means you are putting on Jesus Christ. You have Jesus Christ in you. So then, the Church of Christ, what they'll assume right here, which is baptismal regeneration. That's the second her uh, third heresy. Baptismal regeneration. So in other words, you get regenerated by the Holy Ghost. You are made alive. You are saved. You are born again by the Holy Ghost through water baptism. That's what Church of Christ teaches. So that it seems like in that verse, you put on Jesus Christ, you have Jesus Christ in you, you're saved if you get water baptized. That's what they teach. No, that's not true. It's more obvious than you think. When they get baptized into Christ, notice they're putting on Christ, right? Okay, so here's the idea here. If you're baptized into Christ, at the same time, you're putting on Christ, correct? Okay, does that mean water baptism? Absolutely not. When you're baptized into Christ and you have Christ in you, so 
let me put right here, put on Christ, which means Christ uh, is in you. So when you got saved, you have Jesus Christ enter in you, correct? Yes, Amen. So then it's more obvious than you think. So then when I get saved in Jesus Christ, that's when Christ gets in me. What, that's what baptized into Christ means? Yeah, because it's not a water baptism. Do you see water anywhere in that verse? No, not a single drop of water. By the way, I would even dare say that all the, even at the beginning of chapter 3, verse 1, water is not mentioned even one time. It's such a dry chapter, man. It's, it's, all you see is the Sahara Desert in all of Galatians 3. Where do they find a trickle of water? I don't know. I'm assuming they must have busted up a cactus and, tr cactus and tried to squeeze some water dry out of there. But that's what Campbellites are. They s literally scrounge through anything that might have a trace of water in there and automatically prove water baptism. Now, I know I'm being sarcastic here, but there's a lot of truth in my sarcasm here. When you deal with these people, it is important to understand that's what they are. They are hound dogs that will look up for any trace whatsoever. And that should not scare you. Instead, what that should make you do is put pressure on them that they're really trying hard to find anything that has to do with water baptism for salvation. See, they shouldn't put you in the hot seat. You should put them in the hot seat for doing that. So then, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So then, what are you talking about, Pastor, if it's not water baptism? It's spiritual baptism. It's not water baptism. It's Holy Spirit baptism. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. You got to realize this. What does baptism mean? It means immersion, covered under. It doesn't mean water. Baptism does not all the time mean water. And water does not all the time mean baptism. Baptism simply means to be immersed, covered under. So you can be immersed, covered under, under many different things. You can be immersed, covered under by water, or you can be immersed, covered under by the Holy Spirit. We're not going to turn there, but Mark chapter 1 John the Baptist even said this, I baptize you with water, but Jesus, remember Christ in you? John the Baptist said, but Jesus, the one who's coming after me, will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. See, so this is obvious. So there's a distinction here. There's a distinction with water baptism and Holy Spirit baptism. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For by what? One spirit are we all baptized into one body. See that? Notice the next part, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, right? So it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are, you're baptized by the spirit. And that matches perfectly with Galatians 3. Go back there. Galatians 3, verse 27, you baptize into Jesus Christ. Notice the next part. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. That perfectly matches with 1 Corinthians 12. He's preaching the same sermon here. So this is obviously a Holy Spirit baptism. This has nothing to do with water baptism. If you insist this is water baptism, then you have to insist 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is a separate sermon. It's not talking about the same thing. But you're going to have a time because of verse 28 here of Galatians 3.28. That wording is similar with 1 Corinthians 12. All right, now let's talk about the fourth heresy, which is at verse 28. Notice at verse 28 right here, notice the fourth heresy is there is neither Jew nor Greek. So there is no such thing as a Jew. There is no such thing as a Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. There's no such thing as male or female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Because all of us are one in Jesus Christ. So it doesn't matter which gender you are, which nationality you are, or if you're slave or if you're free, you're all one in Jesus Christ. So this is actually used by weird, weird little liberals that, you know, see, so it, it doesn't matter. So there is such a thing called sexual fluidity or whatever. You know, we're all one. So there's no such thing as a male or a female. 
There's no such thing as uh, Jew, Greek, black, white, uh, Hispanic, Korean, etc., etc. It doesn't matter. We're all one. I'm colorblind. I'm colorblind. No, no, I'll be very honest with you. People who even claim to be not racist or who claim to be colorblind, I guarantee and promise you this. There is some form of racism or colorblind, or uh, there is some form of color seeing within yes. you. Everyone, everyone, okay? Yeah. Everyone has that, okay? To be, quite, to be quite honest, if you don't have that, then you are mentally insane. Now, what do I mean by that? Oh, you're saying that you should be a racist and hate races and stuff like that. No, I never said that. What I mean by mentally insane is this, is that everyone has in their mind a distinction of different people of what they are, of what their background might be like. Everyone has that in their mind. Because you're trying to pretend those things don't exist so that we can all coexist together, you know, you're being pretty insane right there. Now, don't get me wrong, we should all harmonize, we should all unite as one and then help each other out. But then this idea where you don't have a distinction in there because you're trying to please everybody, you're going to land in the cuckoo barn. That's why the, one, the people who are the most insane that they have to practice a lot of self-care are politicians. You know why? They've got to please everybody. They've got to please everybody right there. And then when you live in that kind of a world, you're going to blow your brains out right there. So this one, this coexistence, right? Now, you got to read this, okay? If you really mean that, then that does not make sense. Because the verse says there is neither male nor female. Well, obviously, that's not true then, okay? Scientifically, there is such a thing as male or female. How do you know, Pastor? Look at yourself, okay? Look at yourself at a mirror, mirror okay? Then you know. So the obvious idea is that you got to understand is that there's obviously a physical difference. So then if verse 28 is not physical, then what is it? Is it spiritual then? Yes. Yeah. So here's the idea. The idea is spiritually. So coexistence what? Spiritually. Because we're all going to the same heaven. Amen. We're all going to be existing together. There's no such thing as different nationalities or different genders because when we're all saved, you got to realize this, we're all in the image of Jesus Christ. That's what happens. So because of that, there is such a thing as we're all one. That's why the Bible says we're all one with the Spirit. So this coexistence is spiritually, not physically. Trust me, read throughout the Bible. From the beginning of the Bible all the way, onward and onward, you'll notice that God always put boundaries and boundaries. Do you know why? Now, a lot of liberals and even saved Christians will get mad and say, you're a segregationist and you're a racist and stuff like that. But you got to understand this. You got to understand that in order to have a new world order, what do you need? You need integration no matter what. So that's why God in the beginning for physical coexistence, he did not like that. He wanted to put boundaries. Why? If they were spiritually right with God, that's one thing. And God tried to give it to them over and over again with Adam and Eve, but they messed up. He tried it with Noah. They messed up. So then God's like, okay, then uh, I'll have to uh, do one nation then, the children of Israel, because these guys keep not doing it right. Look at the Tower of Babel. They're all coexisting, integrating together, but was it under God or was it under humanitarian aspects? See that? So God knows that physical coexistence, that if it's not done, see, if this is not the foundation, this is way off. But, wh but when this is done spiritually, there is nothing wrong getting together. I mean, we have, uh, we're a very integrated church right here, which makes me very happy. And we should, this is kind of preaching too, you got to realize this, I know we're in different cultures, nationality, or age groups, or genders, and there might be a big difference in age, uh, in age gaps, but you got to realize this. We're all one in Christ, so pay attention to each other and don't give some brother or some sister special treatment. See, that's pure 
liberal coexistence when you put in the spiritual aspect. Yes, but without that spiritual aspect, then you can condone and tolerate anybody, anything out there. And that's why when a different nation has some cultural belief that does contain wrongness and sin, then this American culture will integrate with that. That's why we're in a mentally ill, sick world where we tolerate any religion, any cultural practice, and then cultural practices have to affect now the psychology realm, the scientific realm, and we can't go by hard facts because we're going to hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. Only takes a small group of homosexuals to overturn the definition of psychology textbooks. See that? Why? Because that's done with trying to coexist with everybody. So this is actually wrong. That's why God always divided them. He always wanted to segregate it. But now we live in a day and age where it's totally impossible. It's a, it's a mixed pot. So what does God say? God say, just preach the gospel to all the world around the world. And then at, no matter what different nationality you are, if you're a saved Christian, we're all one in Christ. Amen. So that's what God's focusing. You know why? Because he knows this thing is already shot no matter how many times he tried. He split them up with different languages as Tower of Babel. Did that work? No, we all use Google Translate. See, mankind wants to keep getting together no matter what. See, mankind. All right then. Now look, there's nothing wrong with coexistence, it sounds like, but see, you got to realize this. Mankind has sin in him. So because mankind has sin in him, that's why God has a problem with physical coexistence because he knows that the physical flesh, you cannot separate sin from the physical flesh. He knows that's impossible. That's why he always segregated. He always divided. He always split them. But now today at the New Testament, what is the Lord focusing? Just reach everybody with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because we're saved brothers, sisters in Christ, we can be one together. That's what God's focusing on. Why? Because God's saying, let them all coexist physically. Because that's what I prophesied, the new world order. Sooner the better so that I can burn up this world and set up my own kingdom after that. Okay, now let's look at the next heresy, Galatians 3, uh, 29. And this kind of relates to 28 as well, which is what shows a little bit of mental illness here. And if ye be Christ, so if you belong to Jesus Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. So you are from the seed of Abraham. You're a Jew and heirs according to the promise. You also inherit the promise that God gave to Abraham. So then here comes replacement theology. So replacement theology insists that saved Christians are the real children of Abraham. They are Abraham's seed. Now, you know, I think I have to, I'm noticing a recent trend on my YouTube videos lately. I'm, it looks like there's a, a number of people there who are into this replacement theology. So I'm going to show you one verse. So go to John chapter 8. Let me convince you with something here. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Now, let me explain this, and I'm going to try to be brief as I can, because I'm not debunking replacement theology. This whole video is not about that. I'm just covering, covering this as a portion. So replacement theology, remember, they believe that saved Christians are the real Jews. That's what they insist. Dispensationalist, we believe, no, there's a distinction with Christian and Jew. But if you look at verse 29, it seems to show right here, no, we are the real Jew. We are Abraham's seed. That's what they're going to insist. Now, the thing is this right here. What you got to understand is, look, the context again, is it physical or spiritual? It's spiritual. So you got to understand this. Christians are the real Jews in a spiritual aspect, spiritually. Now, why is this mental illness if you don't believe it? Because the reason why I'm saying it, that it's mental illness is because you're no different from who at the previous point right here. You notice this? The liberals. A lot of you people think that you are truthers and that, uh, no, I don't like to follow the liberal agenda, but look, you got a same mindset right here. You notice that? So you got a same mindset right here, is that you fail to distinguish what is spiritual and what is physical. You have that same problem with the liberals. You have the same problem with this guy, too, ecumenicalism. Yeah. you got to realize that this is based on a spiritual condition right here. Not everyone's a child of God. Spiritually is not the same as physical. A spiritual Jew is never the same as a physical Jew. 
Because a physical Jew can burn in hell forever without Jesus Christ for his salvation. A spiritual Jew is what? One who received Christ for his salvation. He's going to heaven. Now, there are some people who say this, but there are many fake Jews out there who do not go by the Torah. So those guys cannot be genuine Jews. They follow the Talmud. They follow all this uh, wicked movement, the Zionism movement, etc. But you got to realize this. Remember, what are you looking at? These guys are judging a Jew, a real Jew, by something spiritual again. Yeah. See? You're, you're putting them as the same as Christians then. No, that's not. You're going to have to distinguish us from that's them. Good. That's okay? Good. There's a di you, you can be a physical Jew who follows every spiritual thing wrong, wrong, and wrong mm -hmm. and burn in hell forever without Jesus Christ. You can be a spiritual Jew who doesn't have any physical Jewish trait at all, but if you receive Jesus Christ, you're every much a Jew spiritually in Jesus Christ. Okay. Because why? We're born from Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ's seed is what? Spiritual. Jesus Christ is in us. The seed is in us. See? So because of that, we're all spiritually the same children. You see the problem with these five heresies right here? They're following the same context Paul is talking about. Saved by faith in Jesus Christ so we're all the same family together. And we're all the same Jew. Because we're all share Jesus Christ together with us. Spiritually speaking. So let me show you John 8. This is going to be important here. Look what Jesus said. Jesus told these Jews that they are not Abraham's seed. But at the same time, he recognizes that they are Abraham's seed. Didn't you know that? You know why? Because he's recognizing them as Abraham's seed physically. But then Jesus was preaching at them, it doesn't matter if you were born from Abraham's line. Spiritually, you are no descendant of Abraham. You are a lost child of the devil. Doesn't that make more sense when you put it that way as a distinction? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at John chapter 8, verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would what? Do the works of Abraham. Look what Jesus said. Your father is not Abraham. It's what? Verse 44. You're of your father the what? Devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. That's what Jesus Christ was pointing out to them. But look at this. Notice what Jesus also said to them. Jesus also said, look at verse 56. Your what? Why did Jesus say that? Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Because Jesus recognized that they were Abraham's seed physically. Okay, but then what Jesus was pointing out, but spiritually, you're lost without Jesus Christ. Look, mm -hmm. to, rec to accept the Jew physically as he is a Jew is going to be very powerful when you preach at him that he's not a real Jew spiritually. If you reject him as a physical Jew, then it's not going to be as powerful to him when you preach against him about being a spiritual Jew. See, because if you recognize that he's a physical Jew, the preaching will be stronger that it doesn't matter about your physical flesh here that you're a Jew. God doesn't care about that. He cares more about you being saved child of God spiritually. That's what you're pointing out when you recognize and accept his physical line of a Jew. See that? So here's the idea. Well, they were following the Talmud and stuff like that. Hey, man, these Pharisees, you know what they were doing? They were following Babylonian stuff within their Judaism. They were not Torah observing either. You think these Jews at John 8 were Torah observing? They were not. Jesus told them they were, they were disobeying the law of Moses long before. So when you pick up Jewish conspiracies and all that, you got to realize this. This was already operating ever since Jesus' timeline. All the way at Jesus' timeline, it was already on the way. So you got to realize this. Just because you see them worshiping the devil or that there's some kind of Zionist agenda or that they're following the Talmud and the Talmud is wicked, it actually says that Jesus is burning in fire and excrement right now. One of their rabbinical writings, okay? It is a wicked book. It, it's a wicked religion. It's a lost religion. But Jesus already told you about that a long time ago. And they were practicing all these wicked Babylonian things before, but Jesus said what? They were a Jew. Yeah. They were a physical Jew. But that's what makes it more offensive to a Jew. That's what makes preaching harder to a Jew is that, okay, I know that you're a physical Jew, but that doesn't matter to me at all. 
What matters to me is you're saved in Jesus Christ. Oh boy, that's what made the Jews angry. Because they're saying, you're saying that my physical thing doesn't count then. It has nothing to do with it. You're absolutely right. Do you know how mad they'll be after that? See, that's not compromising when you preach hard against Juda Judaizers, Juda Judaism. That's preaching harder. That's not compromising with them, holding hands and, oh, let's get along with the Jews. And then some of us act like John Hagee and say, if you're a physical Jew, you are automatically saved. No, it don't matter. It don't matter at all.